Just got a bit of a haul from the aquaponic system here behind me and I'm going to give you a quick look at uh, what I've done, how I got this out and what I'm doing just to get everything set back up again for the next batch because um, after getting an absolute load of stuff out here now today and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now you can see here I'm after pulling out loads of leafy greens, I've got loads of lovely lettuce, I'm after pulling this chard here as well, the roots were after growing colossal. Now I've just got this in a bowl of water now at the moment, they haven't got this taken out completely of their little aquaponics cups but you can see the little cups that they grow in now essentially i just put the very small plant in there with a couple of stones and the roots start growing out into the water and you can see just how healthy those roots are now i've just got them left in water now for the moment so technically those these plants are still growing on until i get them prepared there's no point in um, just leaving them dry up and wilt so they're going to still grow here in the sunlight in this bowl of water um, by absorbing water through the roots. Now the water is water out of the aquaponic system. Now I'm doing a big water change here now at the moment. And when I do a water change, it means this tank gets emptied, it goes down to the bottom, and I'm actually doing, rather than a complete water change, I'm doing a long, slow water change. So um, what happened was, I'm after pulling some of the lettuces out of this system here. You can see they were the holes, that they're the holes that the tubs sit into. Now you can see the roots, they tend to fill up and um, they could end up blocking this pipe in these systems. So you need to be careful that you don't let them grow too much and overgrow. Um, but those roots are absorbing all of the nutrients and waste. And if you see here, you can see that's some of the fish waste. Um, and it's pretty gross, but um, the fish waste that's being produced in this system, it's getting pumped up down through the pipe and all the roots of all these plants are absorbing all of those nutrients. They're getting caught up, absorbing them, and it means we're not paying for nutrients um, because that's being provided essentially through all the fish food and, and then the fish are eating waste and they're going to be grown anyway. So um, it means that it's it's a really efficient way of growing uh, fresh you know, veg and greens for yourselves um, but without really putting in any money because this actually kind of eff effectively works as the filtration system for this. Now because of that, I've pulled out a bunch of things. I haven't pulled everything out. Um, We've got a number of different things here. We've got, um, I can see a snail has managed to get up here at my rocket. It caused some trouble. We have some, that's going to be beef tomato. We've got some small peppers. And we can see here, that's starting to throw out little tiny pepper bells. Um, little flowers there were on it a little while ago. We've had pak choy. I've let that go to seed. And it's seeding really significantly there. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to set up a lot of pak choy. Pak choy did really, really well on this system. As did these leafy greens, these leafy lettuces. Um, we've got uh, the war French beans. We've got a number of different... I've even got avocado pits here that are grown on. And I've had a couple of them um, kind of produce some really nice healthy leaves. And they are now planted in soil. They're grown on. Give it a, about 12 years. We'll have some avocados. Happy days. I've got a couple of strawberries down there. They're flowering as well at the moment. Um, and they've put out a couple of strawberries. I have to say, they didn't put out huge strawberries, but the ones they put out were super, super tasty. Um, and I put a couple of other bits and pieces then as well. I got my mint down here at the end. Now, you have to be careful, like I said about the roots, mint will grow crazy. You can see here all the tendrils are growing down the end. I'll regularly take this out, give it a bit of a trim, and the way I do, I just, I basically have this here mainly for my tea, and I'll just pick the ends, and you can see all of these are branched off because I pick the end and then it'll shoot out a couple more um, bits and pieces. And I have some extra mint down here as well um, that I've just taken, I've just propagated from here because it grows just so incredibly quickly. Um, but I don't want to leave this like this for too long because if you can imagine this, what, this is the filtration system for this setup. And I want to keep, like any filtration system, you want to keep it really nicely balanced. And, uh, sorry boo, now you stand on this dog because he's lying underneath me. Crazy boy. Um, so you want to keep all of your filtration systems really balanced. I've done a podcast, a, an in-depth podcast on filtration. Uh, we've got mechanical filtration, chemical filtration, and biological filtration. This guy here is providing chemical filtration, and it's taken all of the chlorine, chloramines, all that nasty stuff out. And then as the system is going along, mechanical filtration is actually being provided by the roots of the plants where we've got waste is getting caught up in them. And you can see here all the roots. Now, this isn't a very particularly big root system on this plant but um ah there we go we can see waste is caught up on that so that's providing mechanical filtration it's stopping the waste from getting back 
into the system. And when the waste is trapped there, all of the good bacteria is providing biological filtration. Now I have this, um, all of these are kind of filled with little stones, but there's actually quite a lot of those stones on the bottom of this system as well. And we've got isopods and red wigglers and little worms that live inside that. And they help break the nutrients down and um, make it easier for the good bacteria to just turn it into nitrites and nitrates and, and for the plants then to absorb them. And I like to have a lot of different types of plants on the system because the more different types of plants you have, the more variance in nutrient requirements there are because lettuce are going to have one uh, nutrient requirement. Tomato is going to have different nutrient requirements. Mint will have other nu nutrient requirements. And the idea is that the balance across them all, all of the plants in the system, will absorb as much of the nutrients out of the water as possible. When I say nutrients, that's the waste nutrients. That's not stuff that's good for fish. That's ammonia being broken down into nitrites and nitrates. And I've done a podcast, like I said, in depth on filtration. Definitely worth looking at um, or listening to. It's available on pretty much, uh, I think it's on most. I, I do it through Anchor, so it's on most. Uh, podcast providers the joy of aquascaping you should check it out now this bottom one that's just filled with soil that's an extra pipe i had and i decided it was leftovers i said rather than waste it and um, i will just pop it in guys this system cost me very little to set up i got that tank for free that was an old tank i had i used a pump from a different pond i used pipes from th those pipes i think were 14 quid each or something like that and um, and i just bent it with a heat gun it probably could have done it with a hair dryer and um, and that's it that's that is, that is it, and I use scrap wood to put it up. A couple of nails or a couple of screws, job done. And um, the pots were a couple of euro each, and I 3D printed out a couple of extra ones that fit just a little bit better. But really, this system probably only ended up costing me about uh, maybe 30 quid to set up. Um, because I had a couple of bits and pieces there. Now, if you don't have the bits and pieces, you could literally just use a big tub for your water. Um, but it's absolutely fantastic. But I do want to get new plants back in, so I'm growing some new plants on. I'm gonna pop them in because now that they're removed um, from these holes uh, going along and I've got all those delicious big greens gone, they won't be absorbing nutrients out of the system, which means it's essentially like I've removed the part of the filter. So I need to replace those now and get that put back in to, just to maintain that balance because that's what we're always trying to achieve is balance in our filtration system. Isn't that right, Brucey? Yeah, good boy. Oh, he's a very good boy. He loves a bit of balance in his filtration system, don't you? And he loves his duckweed pond, and he loves his other duckweed pond. This is new. This isn't finished yet. We're going to get this sorted and set up. Um, we'll see if we can sneak up on them. They're too fast. There's loads of baby goldfish in this half barrel. And, um, nah, they're gone. They've seen me coming. There's also loads of snails. Loads of snails. Look at this fella here, in the upside down. Having a grand time there on the surface of the water. Um, but yeah, and again, like this was a half barrel I set up. It's just got duckweed, string algae, it doesn't actually get water changes, it just gets water top ups. This is kind of a little natural system that I've got going on here. This is new, I'm gonna do a build video on this now later on in the week because it's not finished. Brew is making sure that there's no grass in any of my pots and also wrecking all of my lavender. Thanks, Brew. Um, these guys here are doing super the aqueducts uh, system I just done a video on kind of how I clean this and do my water changes and stuff and all these guys are doing super as well Ranger Mom Bear, oh, Mom Bear's growing some new end they're always growing new end see that little pink spot just above her mouth just above her nose that's a little that little blood spot is when new wang growth is going to grow and I'm pretty excited after finding oh I felt, do you ever like go to sleep and wake up six years later and realize that you've completely forgotten about a whole box of bogwood? Well, that happened to me and I'm super excited. I'm gonna have loads of fun with this. Um, but guys, that's it. I'm gonna wrap up. I just want to give you a quick look because I'm super happy about the return on this stuff here. Now, these vegetables are super healthy. Look at all these good roots. And like I said, there's no point in just pulling them out and letting them die off while I'm waiting to prepare them. I'll just leave them in some water. They can continue growing. So that they don't go wilty they're still nice and crisp and uh, i'll just inspect everything for pests haven't really had pests on the system at all been quite fortunate a couple of little tiny ones but um with it being raised up i haven't had to worry about snails or anything like that a um, couple of snails got up a couple of snails got up uh, but nothing major they had my rocket and didn't seem to go for anything else which is quite good but i'm super happy about this and uh Gonna get all this prepped, get it ready, have some nice salads, sandwiches, feed some to the fish as well, blanch it and uh, give it back in, no point in letting the nutrients go to waste. 
And let these guys have a bit of gr fresh greens. They love it. They all enjoy a bit of fresh greens. But that's it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up there. And I'll talk to you all in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.